In the late 1960s, television audiences were introduced to the magical world of H.R. Puff Stuff. This beloved children's series aired for just one season in 1969, but its impact was long-lasting. Created by Sid and Marty Croft, the show was a psychedelic fantasy that captured the imaginations of viewers young and old. The series follows the adventures of a young boy named Jimmy, who finds himself transported to a magical island populated by talking trees, mischievous witches, and a friendly dragon named H.R. Puffstuff. Together, they must outwit the wicked Witchapoo and her bumbling minions to return Jimmy to the real world. H.R. Puffstuff was popular for its colorful, imaginative sets and costumes, catchy songs, and memorable characters. It also featured a talented cast of actors and actresses, including Billy Hayes as Witchapoo, Lenny Weinrib as H.R. Puffstuff, and Jack Wilde as Jimmy. If you were a fan of H.R. Puffstuff, you may have fond memories of singing along to the theme song or rooting for Jimmy and his friends to outsmart the villains. Whether you were a child when the show originally aired or discovered it later through reruns or streaming, H.R. Puffstuff remains a beloved classic. So, do you have any fond memories of this colorful and wacky series? Share your thoughts in the comments below. The classic children's television show, H.R. Puffstuff, was known for its imaginative and unique characters. But did you know that many of these characters were actually celebrity impersonations? That's right, the talented voice actors behind the show brought some of Hollywood's biggest names to life in the form of talking trees, magical creatures, and more. Let's start with the star of the show, H.R. Puffstuff himself. Voiced by actor Lenny Weinrib, the lovable dragon was actually based on the voice of actor and comedian Paul Lind. Weinrib also provided the voice for several other characters on the show, including the villainous Ludicrous Lion. Speaking of villains, Billy Hayes brought her own brand of humor and flair to the role of Wichapoo. But did you know that the character was actually modeled after legendary actress and singer Ethel Merman? Hayes' impression of Merman's voice added an extra layer of hilarity to the character's over-the-top antics. Other celebrity impressions on the show included Dr. Blinky, who was based on legendary comedian W.C. Fields, and Grandmother Clock, who sounded suspiciously like beloved actress Mi West. Pop Lolly, a character who always had a lollipop in his mouth, was modeled after comedian Jimmy Durante. Even the smaller roles on the show were given the celebrity treatment. Judy Frog was based on singer and actress Judy Garland, while Orson the Vulture was a nod to actor and comedian Orson Welles. Charlie Book was based on the voice of actor and comedian George Jessel, and the evil trees were modeled after the Three Stooges. The big-lipped tree, who often sang and danced on the show, was based on legendary jazz singer Louis Armstrong. Meanwhile, the talking skull sounded suspiciously like horror icon Boris Karloff and the West Wind had a voice that was unmistakably based on actor John Wayne. Last but not least, we have Akim Todinov, a character who only appeared in one episode of the show. Voiced by comedian and actor Don Rickles, Akim was a villainous magician who attempted to steal H.R. Puffstuff's magic flute. All of these celebrity impersonations added an extra layer of humor and familiarity to the already wacky world of H.R. Puffstuff. It's no wonder that the show has remained a beloved classic for over 50 years. H.R. Puffstuff was a children's television series that aired in 1969, produced by Sid and Marty Croft. The show featured a young boy named Jimmy and his magical talking flute, Freddy, who are both kidnapped by the evil Wichapoo and taken to the enchanted living island of Living Island, ruled by the charismatic dragon mayor H.R. Puffstuff. The show was full of colorful characters and wacky adventures, but it's the theme song that caught the attention of one famous musician. Paul Simon, of Simon and Garfunkel fame, heard the H.R. Puffstuff theme song and recognized it as a rip-off of his own song, the 59th Street Bridge song, which he had released just a few years earlier. Simon decided to take legal action against the Croft brothers, and the case went to court. After some legal wrangling, Paul Simon emerged victorious, and was granted a writing credit for the H.R. Puffstuff theme song. 
While some may see this as a minor footnote in the history of both Paul Simon and H.R. Puffstuff, it's actually quite significant. This was one of the earliest instances of a popular musician successfully suing for copyright infringement in the world of television. It set a precedent for future cases involving musicians and TV show theme songs, and it also helped to raise awareness about the importance of protecting one's intellectual property. Today, we take for granted the idea that musicians and other artists should be credited and compensated for their work, but this wasn't always the case. It's thanks to people like Paul Simon and the legal battles they fought that we have a better understanding of the value of creative works and the importance of protecting them. So, the next time you hear the H.R. Puffstuff theme song, remember that it wasn't just a catchy tune. It was also the subject of an important legal battle that helped to shape the world of intellectual property law. And, of course, don't forget to give credit where credit is due. H.R. Puffstuff is a beloved children's television series that first aired in 1969. It follows the adventures of a young boy named Jimmy who finds himself stranded on a magical island inhabited by all manner of strange and wondrous creatures, including the titular H.R. Puffstuff, a friendly dragon. But the show's breakout character, without a doubt, is Witchipoo, the villainous witch who is constantly scheming to capture Jimmy and steal his talking flute. It's hard to imagine anyone else playing the role of Witchipoo, but as it turns out, the casting process was not as straightforward as you might think. Only two actresses auditioned for the part, and the first was none other than Penny Marshall. Marshall was already an accomplished actress, having appeared in popular TV shows like The Odd Couple in Love, American Style. But for whatever reason, the producers felt that she wasn't quite right for the part of Wichipu. Enter Billy Hayes, a stage veteran who had made a name for herself as a versatile and highly entertaining performer. When Hayes came into audition for the role, she didn't hold back. She let out a maniacal cackle that sent shivers down the spines of everyone in the room and then proceeded to hop up on a desk in a display of gleeful wickedness. The producers knew right then and there that they had found their Wichipu. Hayes brought an incredible energy and humor to the role of Wichipu, making her a fan favorite and one of the most memorable villains in television history. Her outrageous costumes, wacky schemes, and unforgettable catchphrases helped make H.R. Puffstuff a classic of children's television. Looking back, it's hard to imagine anyone other than Billy Hayes playing the role of Wichipu. Her larger-than-life performance helped turn the character into an icon, and her talent and dedication to the craft of acting made her an inspiration to countless performers who followed in her footsteps, and all because of a maniacal cackle and a desk hop. H.R. Puffstuff was a television series that aired in 1969 and was created by Sid and Marty Croft. The show followed the adventures of a young boy named Jimmy and his magical talking flute, Freddy, as they traveled to the fantasy land of Living Island. The island was home to a variety of peculiar creatures, including the titular character, H.R. Puffstuff, a friendly dragon who acted as a protector and mentor to Jimmy. Despite being a relatively short-lived series, H.R. Puffstuff quickly gained a cult following for its colorful and imaginative world-building, memorable characters, and catchy theme songs. However, the show's popularity also attracted the attention of fast food giant McDonald's, who allegedly drew inspiration from the series for two of their most iconic mascots, Mayor Machise and Big Mac. In response, the Crofts filed a lawsuit against McDonald's for copyright infringement, citing the striking similarities between the two fast food mascots and H.R. Puffed Stuff. They also pointed out similarities between the living trees on Living Island and McDonald's famous apple pie trees. The lawsuit was a landmark case for copyright law, as it tested the limits of what constituted fair use and inspired numerous similar cases in the years to come. Ultimately, the case was settled out of court, with McDonald's reportedly paying the Crofts a substantial sum of money to avoid a potentially damaging legal battle. Despite the controversy, H.R. Puffstuff remains a beloved classic among fans of children's television, and its influence can still be seen in numerous modern-day franchises, from the Muppets to Adventure Time. In conclusion, the legal battle between the Crofts and McDonald's over the alleged copyright infringement of H.R. Puffstuff by Mayor Machise and Big Mac is a fascinating chapter in the history of television and intellectual property law. The show's enduring popularity and influence are a testament to the Crofts' talent for creating memorable 
and imaginative worlds that continue to captivate audiences of all ages. In the late 1960s, a group of talented creatives known as the Crofts were making waves in the entertainment industry with their innovative and fantastical puppetry designs. Their latest project, the Hemi's Fair 68 World's Fair in San Antonio, Texas, provided the perfect platform for them to showcase their unique brand of whimsy and wonder. The centerpiece of their exhibit was a larger-than-life dragon puppet named Luther, who quickly became the fair's unofficial mascot. His playful demeanor and colorful appearance captured the hearts of fairgoers young and old, and the Crofts knew they were onto something special. But they didn't stop there. After the fair ended, the Crofts took Luther back to their studio and began the process of redesigning him for a brand new project. They tweaked his appearance, gave him a new name, and set him loose in a world of their own creation. Thus was born H.R. Puffstuff, one of the most beloved children's TV shows of the 1970s. Puffstuff himself, a friendly dragon with a distinct southern drawl, quickly became the show's breakout star. But it was the colorful cast of supporting characters that truly set the series apart. From Wichapu, the show's villainous witch with a penchant for cackling and scheming, to Kling and Clang, the bumbling deputies who always managed to mess things up, the inhabitants of the enchanted island of Living Island were a delightfully quirky bunch. But what really set H.R. Puffstuff apart from other kids' shows of its era was its imaginative use of puppetry and special effects. The Crofts' designs were nothing short of groundbreaking, and their attention to detail and commitment to creating a fully realized world was evident in every frame. In the years since H.R. Puffstuff first aired, the show has become a beloved classic, remembered fondly by generations of viewers. Its legacy lives on, not just in the memories of those who watched it as kids, but in the countless shows and movies that have been inspired by its imaginative spirit. And all of it started with a dragon named Luther, brought to life by the creative genius of the Crofts. It just goes to show that sometimes, the most magical things can come from the most unexpected places.